Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our webinar series on new drone regulations in Canada. Today, we're diving into how to get your Level 1 Complex Certificate, which is a key step if you're looking to start the BB loss operations under new regulations. Turning back to today's agenda on getting your Level 1 Complex Certificate, we'll discuss who it's for to help you understand this if this certification applies to you or your team, how to achieve it, the exact steps required by Transport Canada. Then we'll look at a overview from Altex Level 1 Complex Training Program and what makes it unique. Then finally, we'll share some best practices to help you choose the best path to achieve Level 1 Complex Certificate. Let's start with uh, who it's for. The Level 1 Complex Certificate is designed uh, primarily for those who are preparing to step into beyond visual line of sight drone operations. It's a mandatory for pilots who are already preparing for BV loss and wanting to start operations as soon as the November implementation starts. Now, the second group is also for pilots who uh, currently have advanced certificate, looking to grow their skills and expand uh, their future opportunities. It also applies to industry professionals, from system designers to ops managers, who are involved in planning, approving, um, or supporting advanced drone operations and future beyond visual line of sight operations. I want to expand on this slide for uh, a moment because there's always the question that uh, comes up during training. It's should I wait until I absolutely need the certificate or should I uh, explore it now even if I'm, I'm not sure? Um, the truth is when it comes to training, there, there's never the best time for training. In today's age, there's so much information out there with, um, you know, with AI, with ChatGPT, with YouTube, there's a lot of different methods for anyone to achieve, uh, to acquire knowledge and um, have the skills for any professional or commercial operations. So structured training is no longer the only option for someone to uh, operate um, advanced or level one complex certificate. But if you are looking for structured training, we always I say it's important to um, uh, acknowledge the learning curve because this is really going to help you to speed up the learning curve with a structured training program and uh, instructors who can share their experience as well. Especially with drone industry, the technology is still evolving. Um, you know, after 12 years of being in the industry, surprisingly, it's still evolving in many aspects. So if uh, you're currently operating with uh, advanced pilot certificate and uh, in advanced environment and you're happy with your client base, your um, technology and your operations, um, taking on level one complex certificate doesn't necessarily mean you're going to fly beyond visual line of sight. A lot of times it just means that it gives you opportunities to improve maybe the efficiency, maybe if you're building a drone business, uh, help to improve the profitability, reduce um, you know, more overhead expenses by implementing BV loss operations or exploring new client base on those who are looking to hire uh, pilots or services in BV loss operations. So if you're even considering fly BV loss or expanding your skill set, your uh, client base, the certification is a excellent place to start. You don't need to be certain of uh, your destination of where you're going, but it definitely gives you opportunity to explore and move forward. Next, let's talk about uh, how to achieve level one complex certificate. Keep that in mind. The mandatory requirement always comes from regulation. So the simple checklist is you must be 18 years or older, currently have an advanced pilot certificate with a minimum of 20 hours ground school completion, then pass the online exam level one complex operations and pass the level one complex flight review. So finishing those steps will help you to get your level one complex certificate. Um, there's also an optional step before passing the flight review for level one complex, which is to take um, some practical flight training. And this is very similar to the current advanced pilot certificate program. Flight training is not mandatory. 
So if you have the knowledge and skill sets, especially in um, earlier uh, in today's session, earlier we looked at the poll with many of the attendees have had um, simulated or uh, uh, BV loss operations at more than five missions. That means you already have quite a bit of experience, knowledge, and skill set to navigate beyond visual line of sight operations. So if you are ready, there's um, definitely no reason why you cannot just go uh, challenge the level one complex flight review right away. And that can help you to get the level one complex certificate. Um, but if you're looking to go through a structured uh, learning program, which we'll talk um, on the next slide, then there is an option to take flight training as well. Now let's talk about the Altex level one complex program. Um, there are two options. First is the full level one complex program at uh, $24.95. So this includes the online ground school, which has the 20 hour self-paced uh, ground school uh, learning curriculum. After that, there's also an instructor led module, six hours, and this includes beyond visual line of sight simulation. In the moment, I'm actually gonna be sharing a screen to show um, what does it mean the beyond visual line of sight simulation. After the online process, uh, we have two days of in-person practical flight training. And at the end of the two days is when you will challenge the level one complex flight review. If you are a Altex advanced graduate, meaning you've already completed uh, the 20 hours of online ground school, then all you have to do is um, take some quizzes to make sure that your knowledge is still current and then move forward to the six hours of uh, BV loss simulation with the uh, instructor-led module. And that's still online. It's a prerequisite before you can schedule the two days of uh, in-person practical flight training. So for both programs, we actually include the BV loss drones and systems. Um, before sharing my screen to look at the beyond visual, light, uh, beyond visual line of sight simulation, I just want to quickly mention for post-training competency uh, certificate. So when you complete the level one complex program, that means you received a pilot certificate for level one complex from Transport Canada, similar to when you finish the advanced program um, and received your advanced pilot certificate. So at Altex, we also have a competency certificate, which after completing the program, uh, first of all, you have one year of continuous online program access, so as you start beyond, beyond visual line of sight operations, for example, if you are uh, running a site survey, flight planning, to look at if a site is suitable for low risk beyond visual line of sight operations, you still have continuous access to the modules and the uh, walkthroughs online to help you better plan your flight operations. We also have training support to complete 10 hours of beyond visual line of sight flight. This is when we always say just getting a certificate and passing the exam, you're, that's, that's actually the beginning of your journey. That's not the end. Um, we, we want to support pilots to take the knowledge and uh, you know the, the operations knowledge and skills we share in the training program. We want to see those turn into your skill sets, which means that you need to have practical flight operations after training. And this is where the post uh, training support comes in. We'll supply you with access to the, our flight facility as well as um, drone equipment if you don't have regular access to, let's say, enterprise equipment or the online uh, flight control or enterprise uh, fleet management systems to support beyond visual line of sight operations. We'll continually uh, support you with the facility and equipment. And the goal is to help the, every student to build up their 10 hours of beyond visual line of sight flight. That's when I a training facility, we would consider you to have a competency certificate, which means that not only you completed the initial training, acquired the certificate, you've also had um, in uh, flight hours to build up those skill sets, you know, build up the muscle memory and make sure you're going through your checklist and uh, pre-flight uh, operations planning every time. Beyond visual line of sight simulation, the goal of this is to prepare you before coming in for uh, the two days of in-person practical flight training. We want to make sure at least you have a chance to look at the uh, observe from the back seat, so to speak, as a drone operation is being carried out. Uh, for example, on our facility, this is where we currently have a dock 2 with uh, Matrix 3TD. 
So during the simulation, uh, all of you will be able to see the online fleet management. So if you've used uh, DJI systems or enterprise systems, this is the DJI fleet management, uh, where you can see remotely. Currently, we're looking at the dock screen. So this is before uh, the Matrix 3 TD is getting ready to take off from the dock. And this is where we can see uh, down here all the different system information, our uh, satellites with RTK. Altitude, horizontal speed, uh, distance to home, you know, battery percentage. And once the drone takes off, this is also where we see live video as well as the actual operations map online. So we can see where the drone is. Later on, I'll also talk about some of the training best practices where one of them is we have um, a maximum instructor to student ratio. Um, one instructor, one drone system to two student ratio. So this is where we look at your intended um, beyond visual line of sight drone operations. Is it looking at um, surveying progress uh, management? Is it looking at uh, site or asset security and protection? And then the beyond visual line of sight simulation mission is pretty much tailored to your intended operations. So during simulation is when one of our pilots and uh, visual observers will be on site operating the drone while you are sitting at the back seat being able to observe the drone's system information, data, having live communication with the team on site. And then the stage two of that is actually um, you will be able to look at some of the virtual controls as well. So how to virtually control the drone as to uh, execute automated mission, execute, let's say, um, on-demand operations as to check a location or return to home if a situation changes. So we believe this is really an important prep uh, on beyond visual line of sight simulation before you come on site for the in-person flight training. It will give you a real life scenario of what beyond visual line of sight operation looks like. Okay, next slide. I'd like to talk about best practices. Um, obviously, we, we only have one drone hub with a 70 acre facility. It's not a, a spot we can, we can establish throughout Canada. So there will be students who are looking at uh, uh, acquiring training and acquiring your certification at other locations. So we recommend when you are looking at training programs, here are some of the considerations or best practices, especially when you're looking at a beyond visual line of sight program where most of them are multi day trainings with quite a bit of online prep information. Um, you want to look at them to ensure that there is some kind of training management, that there's admin support. For example, we have a team dedicated to looking at scheduling, coordination uh, for in-person training, especially having to do with uh, people traveling, um, travel uh, schedule, as well as weather contingencies, what happens if weather is no longer suitable, how to coordinate schedule accordingly. Getting everyone's uh, credentials, pilot certificate in place, um, having all the equipment and online systems uh, set up, profile set up for the students, managing equipment availability, etc. And then the second one is, uh, I always recommend for beyond visual line of sight, it's important to either participate in the simulation on uh, the training facility system, or if you have DJI Enterprise System, uh, fleet management, or other type of planning software to immerse yourself in a uh, BV loss simulation before you go for uh, in-person practical training. And simulation can be as simple as using a mini, a SAP 250 drone that you can run beyond visual line of sight simulation. For example, you can sit inside of your vehicle without having to fly the drone really far away. Pick a safe location where you can sit at the back of your vehicle and then not looking at your drone for a short flight. Uh, obviously manage that safely, but that's gonna help you to build up your confidence, especially if you're stepping from just visual line of sight operations where you can always see the drone, you can see the environment surroundings um, around the drone while you're operating. Once you take that away and stepping into only looking at your drone system, it takes a bit of time just to get used to that. So I always recommend having uh, either access from the school side for beyond visual line of sight simulation or do some of that on your own before um, the in-person practical training. 
Next one is the instructor and equipment to student ratio. Um, again, going back to a beyond visual line of sight operations, um, very soon we're gonna take a quick poll on what type of beyond visual line of sight operation everyone is looking for. But um, uh, currently looking at the industry, there are actually many possibilities. So you wanna kind of think about, are you going into um, a training environment with 10, 20 students that everyone has different scenarios and different operational environment, or are you going into training where there's maximum two students, instructor and equipment to the student ratio, where you get enough individual attention time. Or if you are an organization looking to get, let's say, um, six to 10 pilots trained, when you have all of them going through training, you probably don't want all of them sharing just the one enterprise system your team has. So for example, as a school, we always provide additional enterprise drones uh, for this type of training to make sure it's maximum two students sharing one drone system. So they can get enough time to go through the settings, follow through the instructor's step, program flights, and have enough flight time. Next one is take a look at the training facilities. Um, as simple as, you know, is it a facility where there's classroom or is it a private setting versus is it a public park setting where you have to be more careful with potential general public coming in? Uh, is there power access? You know, is there any type of a school related facilities that can help you to improve your learning experience and uh, learning result? And the last one is post-training support. Uh, again, successful training programs doesn't stop at um, the completion of certification. We believe it takes certification to building up your flight hours and practice you know, at least up to 10 flight hours to turn the training knowledge into your skill set. Or many times it's when students starting to have operations. This is when their knowledge learned in the course really um, comes into the workspace when they're planning for uh, location, when they're looking at, let's say, population density, looking at airspace, et cetera. It's very common that you're gonna encounter questions when you start operations. So check to see if there's that level of support from the training school as well.